Gear Raid 1. Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet for this stage. There is no amazing strategy I can give you, but I will do my best to show you some of the techniques I've found and some of the heroes that I have been using that have the best luck and get you the most progress in Gear Raid 1. In general, there is not really much difference between the stages. It is mostly a gear check, it is mostly a hero check, so I'll give suggestions on possible teams that can work in the higher level raids as well. Now a good suggestion if you're stuck on any raid content is to hit this new button here if you're on the latest update, guides, and you can see there's a button line up that clear the stage and it will show you some clearance times and some teams that other people have used and you can inspect their heroes to see what gear they're using, what stats they're like, what BP they're at. And it's just a good way to see some teams that might line up with you. You might find a team that has the same heroes that you have available. Everyone is going to build their team their own way. Looking how other people have built theirs does help a lot. So I would definitely recommend checking these out so you can see what other people have done and how they've cleared certain stages. The recommended heroes tab is kind of a, a Christmas wish list. You're not really going to have a lot of these. So checking what other people have used, you'll see some people have been using lots of different epics. And it can just give you some good ideas. So definitely check that out. So quickly we'll talk about unit placement. So don't worry too much about the units that I'm using for this. This will just be to show you how I would suggest placing your heroes and what you can get out of them if you do that. So in gear raid one, you need to defend two walls to make sure that the enemies do not reach the end points. There are two lanes. If you go to the monster manual, you can see that there are four types of enemies, including the boss, the Scythe of Doom. Falls below 50% health, it falls into a rampage and deals more damage, so you want to be able to burst this quickly. And you can see that it has an ability that allows it to deal damage to platform targets. Other than that, it has high HP, high attack, and reasonable everything else. There are these incubator enemies. These effectively spawn suicider units that will run up to you, explode, and leave a pool of poison acid on the floor that will hurt the tower units as well as any adjacent tiles. There are the Baron Salem units, which are fairly tanky and quite strong. And there are butchers that hit very hard. Now this is all because they are, these butchers are here to break these walls down. And your objective, of course, is to kill them so that they don't. There are many things you can play with. One trick that is worth noting, if I put Raf here, you see he has only one tile. He will actually hit these units through this wall because they will lip into the wall. So this is a good way to get some extra damage out. If you're trying to make it work, you don't have enough AoE heroes, then using a hero like this will work very well. So another thing to be mindful of is these are the incubators that spawn these suiciders. So if I leave sitting out to here to freeze to help slow the wave down, when these units explode at this adjacent point, she now is taking damage. So you need to be very mindful of this when you're placing your heroes. So typically you will place your ranged units far back like here, so they won't take damage from the suicider units. However, Sitnata is not very useful if placed this far back. So I like to use Sitnata to freeze, to slow down the wave. I put her here, and then I will chuck down an AoE healer. And if you see, if you stick your AoE healer in the corner, you will reach all these tiles. However, my Elowin is tanky enough that I can do this. She will take some damage from the poison, but she's a strong enough healer that she'll be able to do this. And what this means is I'm healing Sitnata, I'm healing Elowin, she's healing herself. And I will be able to put down, say, my defender here to block a little bit. Now, this is not particularly useful. It is for me, but I'll go over the reason for that later. But it just means that if you do need to have heroes down doing damage from the back wall or whatever, a single AoE healer should be able to cover everyone. Now, typically what you can do is you can put a bunch of your units on the bottom and then you can just use the top row on the other side. And that will allow you to get a few units down that are out of harm's way. And you don't have to worry about them suddenly getting destroyed by the suiciders that are now emerging. As for the rest of placement, it really just comes down to making sure that your main damage dealers have a good reach. So for me, in my example, I have Vienna is my primary damage and Zealus is my primary damage. I know that when I place my units properly, the enemies will not get past this first wall. So I don't mind placing them both here. However, if in your team, the enemies are making it to the second wall, then you may want to change your placement and you may want to stick your damage like this. Zealus will still be able to reach the bottom tile. As you remember, they kind of stand inside that tile. So even though he can only reach the bottom one here, he'll be able to make his auto attacks onto that tile as well. So it just depends where you are, how far back you want to place your main damage dealers. But this is mainly all there is to your placement. You want to make sure that you're able to heal people. If you do need to put people near the edge, such as Sitnauta or maybe other short range CCing units, then you can, but you need to make sure you have decent enough healing to cover them. When I was running my earlier stages, I relied a bit more on fighters. 
And even in my current team, I use Arrogance a lot because of his ability to add some AoE damage. So I do still have Elowin here healing, and then I can stick him somewhere like this. So that is the main steps I would suggest regarding placement. Just make sure that you're utilizing the far rows. These 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 rows at the, the top and the bottom are the safest rows, of course. They are not within reach of the exploding units, so you're safest here. So one last thing to keep in mind is if you notice, the boss is actually in the top row of the lane. So this lane is where the boss comes. So you may wish to, at the last second, drop a defender down in place. And of course, you will need to make sure that your healer can actually reach them. This is optional. I don't do this in my runs, but it might help you as an option. Just something to try out if you're having trouble with the boss smashing through the walls. As you can see, my defender is successfully holding the boss in place. I'll obviously need to do a lot more if I want to keep everyone alive. It's just another thing you have to play with. It's another option in your toolkit. Blocking the boss is a great way to reduce the damage on the wall and to buy your damage dealer's time to kill the boss. As you can see, she's below 50% health now, so she's enraged and she's dealing more damage. Keeping my defender alive will be much harder. But again, you're just aiming to buy time so that the boss goes down without dealing too much damage to your wall. And as you can see, this is working out fairly well. So just another option for you. So first thing, I will show you what my current team is. I'll show you my gearing for them and how I've built them. I have a pretty strong team, a pretty fast team. It is not a free-to-play friendly team. It's not an easily built team. It relies on two legendaries especially, Vienna and Zealus. Now it is mainly Vienna. Also, Arrogance has a lot of contribution. So there are actually three big units that hit a lot of damage in this. Viona is leagues ahead of the rest of them though. I got her at the weekend just gone. Congratulations if you got her as well. She will help you massively in this gear raid. Now we'll start with my Viona. I have built her with a broken set and I have built her with a elite fighter set on the left. I have focused on crit charts, attack and crit damage as is pretty standard. And I have picked up some attack speed along the way but that was not intentional. This was just the best piece I had to give her at the time that had the other stats I wanted. If you look at her first attack, it specifies that it does not scale with attack speed. So definitely don't go out of your way to build attack speed. Obviously it doesn't hurt if you end up with some, it just won't actually give you any impact. I have a fairly decent equipment on my Vienna. I don't have a proper set on her. If I could have a proper set on her, it would probably be the Shatter set or it would be the Curse set, but most sets would be fine. Night Terror would be fine as well. Sticks would be fine. It's fine, but with anything with gearing, I definitely suggest chasing stats before the gear set. The stats I have on my Vienna, I am more than happy with. She does lovely damage. The stats for my Arrogance are basically the same story. Pretty standard for DPS, nothing wild going on. For someone like Vienna or Zealus, I would like to build in a bit more Rage Recovery. I have a decent amount on my Zealus. As you can see, my Zealus has the Curse set and he has the Elite Fighter set. I think the Curse set is one of the better sets that you can get for dealing with Gear Raid 1 as an AoE mage. But again, I think the Shatter set is just generally probably one of the best sets. So that's very simple. That's how I built my DPS. Pretty standard across the board. As for what team I run, it looks something like this. It changes a little bit, but it doesn't really matter that much. As you can see, I've made sure to pick up the Curse Lord bonus, even though I'm using an unbuilt Nero. For my team, this is because I have two very powerful curse members, Zealus and Vienna. Captain Reeve also does a notable amount. The reason I like these is because the faction bonus means that they deal 15% more damage to slowed, stunned, frozen and immobilized enemies. And the reason that's great with someone like Captain Reeve is he passively slows everyone near him. Any adjacent tile to him is slowed. As you can see here, slows 10 enemies within range by 50%. Them being slowed by that means that my cursed mages gain 15% bonus damage. And that's another reason why I've picked up Sit and Alta, just so I have the bonus slow. As for the top side, this is just because Arrogance deals a massive amount of AoE damage. I have Raph there just for the Lord bonus to assist him. I have Elowin for healing. I have also got Anvita because her attack boost is nice. And Shark King is one of the best AoE damage marksmen around. So pretty simply that is my team. The main trio is of course going to be Arrogance, Zealous and Vierna for damage. Although uh, honorable mentions to the other two cursed members for granting the damage bonuses to my first two mages. So I will show you how I place them. So I will place my Zealous first. It doesn't really matter, I'll be able to get both Vienna and Zealus out before these wave arrives. I've placed them both on the edge, that means they can hit these tiles as this is where some of the incubator units will sit at the end, so it just saves me a bit of time. And I'll just let these die to the debuff. I will drop down Sit and Alta, and I'll need to get down my Elowin pretty soon, otherwise they risk dying. And I can just use Vienna's ult to completely cull that wave. I'll drop Elowin so I have healing down. And now that this wave's arriving, Viona's ult is on cooldown, so I will use Zealus's ult. 
I will get Arrogance down as he has very high damage. And now the Incubators have arrived at the back and I have some AoE damage coming out. You notice my Vienna is too far away to take damage from this. These two are taking damage but my healer is enough to deal with that. I will drop Shark King. And then now the boss is coming in. This is where I want to really do a bunch of damage so I can pop Vienna's ult to wipe that out. More damage coming in. And the rest of it should be pretty simple. I still have my Shark King ult. I haven't been very good at activating ults as I'm trying to explain stuff. The rest of it's pretty simple. You can see Shark King has taken a bit of damage. These guys are shooting, but it's nothing too bad. Shark King goes down, but that's fine. He's He can't really do a lot at this stage. And I can use Viona's ult to try to call these guys a bit faster. Dealers' ult as well, because otherwise these guys will sit around at the end and it does take up a bit more time. And there you go. Pretty simple, pretty safe. The wall is pretty undamaged relatively. I didn't place things particularly well. It doesn't really matter too much. I just need to get my damage dealers down at the right timing. I don't really need Captain Reeve. I don't really need Sitnauta. Um, it works fine. I probably could optimize it. I, I might look into doing that to get my time faster. To show you the damage that was done from this run, you can see Vienna is leagues ahead. Zealus has done pretty well as well, and Arrogance has done a lot. As for what team you're going to want to make up for your own runs, I would suggest definitely taking a AoE healer, such as Elowin if you have her. If you do not have her, someone like Midan would work as well. But generally just any AoE healer, regardless of what your stage, whatever you have to work with, I would recommend an AoE healer. You can place yours further back and you might be able to get away with a single target healer, like Light Lock, Diffusible Hero, or Vortex for example. But I'm sure you can work that out. DPS in terms of fighters or using a defender is not particularly necessary. You can absolutely make it work if you need to, it does not do any harm. Placing fighters at the back row can allow you to attack beyond the wall, so it is there's no detriment in doing it. The primary thing that matters with this run is it, you, it all comes down to your AoE damage. Ideally you will use an AoE mage, most of them are curse. You will use someone like Zealus, you will use someone like Vienna. Some of the other great AoE heroes that you can use from the legendary tier will stick to first. Morrigan would be of great use. There is the new hero Cerberus if you are on a server that has the update. Twin Fiend is not particularly AoE focused but does have a good ult so he would be able to contribute. Nyx has some decent burst damage and some good AoE damage as well so she could definitely help. And Ajax is one of the kings of Gear Raid 1 as well. In general I would say the best heroes at the moment are Vierna, Ajax and Zealus. They seem to be really focused on this kind of content so I would say they're, they're some of the top heroes. Outside of just AoE mages, some other heroes that are pretty good for this content. Hatsa is, is pretty good for this content. Her default attack bounces. Her ultimate deals a massive amount of AoE damage which does help. Salivit can do some basic AoE damage through the wall. It helps a bit. It's not amazing. Arrogance is probably one of the best non-mages for this level. He does so much AoE damage when his ultimate is activated, so he is a huge one for this level. Definitely use him if you have him. Some other heroes in the Cursed Cult from the Legendary tier. Captain Reeve can actually do notable damage as well with his ultimate up. Venoma has the ability to disarm people as well from her curse effect and she does have some ways of slowing enemies and dealing damage over time so another new hero that might be pretty good for this content. As for heroes from the epic tier that would be quite good, Iona would be a very good hero to use. She is highly rated for AoE damage and she has some good CC as well. From the north, Sitnauta I would recommend just for her ability to slow and freeze enemies. She does not do a great deal of damage but that's not what she's there for. Shark King is very good, his default attack splash, his ultimate does a massive burst of damage and it comes in big waves as you may have noticed so you really do want your damage to be focused so he is great for that and his ult comes off quickly. He also when awakened his ultimate can freeze enemies, his spears can slow so he's just great for control. Greed is a very good AoE mage if you do have him. He has some decent abilities for AoE attacks and he also has some AoE CC. He has some slow effects. Caravelli is another AoE mage. I personally didn't have much joy when I tried him out so I can't personally recommend him but I'm sure if you're lacking anything and you put enough effort into building him he could do decent damage as well. Scorch is a fighter you can place in the back row because of his two damage tile he will be pretty good for this content as will any two range attacker that does kind of splash damage in a line. For this reason Valkyria would also be good as her attacks go through 
two tiles forward, I think three tiles forward even, and does AoE damage and inflicts magic vulnerability, so Valkyria is very good. I missed her from the legendary. Lisa can be decent as she has some split shot on her passive auto attack and she also has multi shot, though again she's not magic damage, she's not ideal for this, but it's an option. Aswan can be used because he does have slows, he has ways of kind of bringing down the enemy's pace and he does do some AoE damage as well. Rake does some AoE damage, though I haven't personally got no experience with him and don't know anyone who's ever built him, so I have no experience, but he looks like he could be usable. Yes, yeah, Susie is a possible option, as she has some control and CC, though she is not really considered very highly, but maybe you can make her work. So those are it from the individual units that I would recommend. As for making a team out of them, I would definitely suggest focus on damage first. That is how you get this done. Almost everything will be gated on how quickly you can kill them. Outside of placement and having the right heroes, there really isn't that much more to gear raid 1. It is pretty much a hero check, it is a gear check, you need to be strong enough. If you find yourselves getting stuck, one of the best things you can do is start promoting heroes and upgrading them, getting them to 6 stars, get them to 6 star promoted. It is a huge stat increase going from 5 to 6 stars and it is also a huge stat increase going from the promotion 5 to 6. So if you are stuck and you feel like you have a good team, that is one of the best steps you can take. Your main barrier to getting through is going to be stage 13 and 14. If you look at the recommended BP, 194, then 250, and 281. And then from there, there is obviously still big jumps, but I found with the gear raids that I tend to hit a wall around 12 to 14. And once my team's got to that stage, I suddenly find it a lot easier to climb down to 17, and then 18 is the last hurdle. But that's pretty much all I can really recommend. I would think build your teams out of the he heroes that you can fit most. Try to ensure you have a healer so that you can place more units safely. Take advantage of the rows at the top and the bottom and use as much AoE as you can. If you're just trying to progress through these to get the first time rewards or if you want to push yourself just to see how far you can go, definitely use assist heroes, focus on Zealous, try to get a Vierna or an Arrogance even, and just try to push with some big AoE damage dealers. The rest of it will just come down to farming some better gear to upgrade your units to deal more damage. It is pretty much just a damage race. There isn't much room for strategy in this one. So yeah, that about covers everything I think I can go over. If you have any questions, do let me know below and I will get back to you. If you have some team suggestions or ideas on heroes that I might have overlooked, then do let other people know as it might help others. And thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.